number GS 6800-17, Hyundai. The back window of your car isn't rolled pro properly. Car number GS 6800-17. Corpus Christi, Corpus Christi, arise Catholic faithful, arise Catholic faithful, how good and pleasant it is, indeed how good and pleasant it is, a very merry and blessed Christmas to you all this morning. Today is the Nativity of the Lord. We have gathered here to celebrate the Holy Eucharist with one of the princes of the Catholic Church. Our main celebrant for today is His Eminence, Peter Cardinal Kojo Apia Texan, the Prefect of the Dicastery for Promoting Integral Human Development. Shall we compose ourselves for Holy Mass this morning? A gentle reminder, dear parishioners, that during the creed, when we get to the words and became man, we shall genuflect. So kindly take note. Are the words and became man, we shall genuflect as a sign of worship 
for the incarnation of Christ our Savior. When we also come for communion, please gently take your mask to the side or to the bottom and receive communion in your palms as directed. Sometimes we receive communion in a clumsy fashion. Please receive reverently in your fingers, having take, on your palms, having taken your mask to the side or to the bottom, and then proceed to your seat quietly. Thank you very much.
brothers and sisters in Christ, we have found the keys to a Honda vehicle. Keys to a Honda vehicle that were left somewhere at the back. If they belong to you, kindly contact me for the keys. And so shall we rise and welcome the ministers to the sanctuary. Hymn number 139. 139.
it seated for a moment. Couples Christi. Couples Christi. Unity in Christ. How lovely and how blessed it is. Arise, Catholic faithful. So today we are blessed to have in our midst a prelate of the church from the eternal city, from the Vatican City, our own father, His Eminence Peter Kadna Apia Texan. As custom and tradition demands, we will request also the father of this house to welcome all of us, including our eminence. Father, very reverend father, Felix Asenio Kwashi will do that for us. Shall we have the welcome party? We were glad when the news of your coming reached us, and our hearts are filled with joy to have you here on this special day of the Lord. His Eminence, Peter Cardinal Tarkson, welcome to Corpus Christi Catholic Church. May the joy of Christmas fill your heart as you celebrate it with us. Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. You can come up, my dear. Please come up. Your Eminence, Reverend Father, Parish Pastoral Council Chairperson, Parish Pastoral Council Members, Society and Group Leaders, Parishioners, Distinguished Guests, Brothers and Sisters in Christ. Today will definitely find its place in the history book of our wonderful parish as we host a great personality who is offering ministry at no mean a place as the Vatican in Rome, Italy. As members of a community of faith in this part of God's creation, we always admire and also take so much pride in our beloved Cardinal, whom we regard as holding high the flag of Ghana in the heart of the Catholic Church's structure and activities. I wish to joyfully recall that the visit of our beloved Cardinal was anticipated many years ago. However, as the saying goes, God's time is the best. God, in his infinite wisdom, has arranged that his eminence should visit us at no other time than the day of Christmas. The day God has become one of us in all things but sin. The day of the Emmanuel. What a blessing that the Almighty God has bestowed on all of us the family of Corpus Christi Church. On behalf of the members of the Pastoral Council, parishioners, both old, young, and children, 
I wish to heartily thank His Eminence Peter Cardinal Apia Texan for accepting our invitation and for his presence among us on this Christmas Day. Welcome, Your Eminence. May I now respectfully request that you lead us in today's Eucharistic celebration. Once again, you are welcome to Corpus Christi. So on my, on my part and on my own behalf, I bid all of you a very good morning. And uh, on behalf of the young lady who presented the bouquet of flowers, I wish to present the same bouquet of flowers to all of you and bid you welcome into the church. And to take the words of uh, Father welcoming all of us here one step further. And it will be to welcome you not just into this church, but it will be to welcome all of you around this altar. To welcome you all to sit at the banquet table of the Lamb. For on this altar, the Lord is about to break bread with us and to bless the chalice of salvation for us. So my words of welcome to you is not to this church because that is the owner or that's the boss. My welcome is to work all of you around the, ta around the altar, the banquet table of the Lamb, to sit at table with Jesus and to have him break bread for us as he did about 2,000 years ago with his disciples. So my dear friends, let's all come sit at table with the Lamb as we stand and begin our celebration in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God, and may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So as uh, we come to sit at table with the, la with the Lord, and as we come so to hear his word and to celebrate this Eucharist, have him break bread and bless the cup for us. Let us be guided, especially in this period of Christmas, where several of us who had the opportunity prepare themselves for Christmas with some act of confession or penitence. And the very many who did not, we come this morning to also recognize that Jesus comes to meet us and he comes to meet us contrite of heart. So for this morning, let the words of John in his first letter, chapter 3, verse 22, lead us into this celebration. John says that when our consciences accuse us of nothing before God, then we're confident that when we pray, God listens to us. When our consciences accuse us of nothing before God, then we're confident that when we pray, God listens to us. So as we come for this great moment of prayer, let us enter, go into our hearts and our consciences and our minds, and try to discover whatever our consciences may be accusing us of, and in great humility bring them all before God and ask God, to forgive us, to grant us pardon, and to change our heart. So briefly, let us see God's pardon, entering our consciences, and asking for his pardon where we need them. Change your hearts, O oh God, make it ever true. Change 
As we make our confessions together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have gravely sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. To my fault, to my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints and you my brothers and sisters to pray for me to the lord our god and so may the almighty god have mercy on us may he forgive us all our sins may he enable us to forgive one another and may he bring us all to everlasting life Amen.
to share in our humanity for he lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and our one God forever and ever The first reading, a reading from the book of Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good tidings, who publishes peace, who brings good tidings of good, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns, listen, your watchmen lift up their voice. Together they sing for joy. For eye to eye, they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. 
the word of the Lord. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Oh, sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. His right hand and his holy arm have brought salvation. The Lord has made known his salvation, has shown his deliverance to the nations. He has remembered his merciful love and his truth for the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing out your praise. Sing psalms to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Raise a shout before the King, the Lord. The second reading, a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In many and various ways, God spoke of old to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the ages. He reflects the glory of God and bears the very stamp of his nature upholding the universe by his word of power. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down as the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has obtained is more excellent than theirs. For to what angel did God ever say, you are my son, Today I have begotten you, or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. The word of the Lord. shown upon us. Come, O nations, and adore the Lord. 
for today a great light has come down to earth In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through Him, and without Him nothing came to be. What came to be through Him was life, and this life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony, to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world he was in the world and the world came to be through him but the world did not know him he came to what was his own but his own people did not accept him but to those who did accept him he gave power to become children of god to those who believe in his name who were born not by natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by man's decision, but of God. And the word became flesh, and dwelt and made his dwelling among us, and we saw his glory, the glory of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, saying, this was he of whom I said, The one who is coming after me ranks ahead of me, because he existed before me. From his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace. Because while he, the law was given to Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God the only Son, God, who is at the Father's side, has revealed Him. Beloved in Christ, the Gospel of the Lord.
resume our seats for the homily. My dear friends, I'm just be shown that we have to preach from here, right? You, you proclaim the word of God from here, so I have to follow your good example and also preach from here. Okay. So, my dear friends, I know at the end of this celebration, I'm going to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas and a very blessed New Year. And that will come. And Father wants to help me do the homily. And because I said that, it's going away. Uh, it is this. At the, at, the, at, the, at the beginning of this celebration, I was introduced as having been, you know, uh, for having accepted your invitation to be here. Actually, actually, for the past 10 years, I try to do a quick visit home for Easter and for Christmas. And when I come home, knowing that the parishes are parish priests and all, I look for some village where there's no resident priest. And then the village doesn't get to know ahead of time that there will be anybody visiting. And so when it is time for mass, I show up and cause a little bit of excitement, especially for the head of the Christian community because the first thing that happens is that they do not simply rejoice at an un the presence of an unexpected visitor, but then the concern already begins, and it is, what are we going to give him? Okay, until, until at the end I say, I don't need anything. You did not invite me, I came myself. So, so I bear everything myself. And it's the same thing. I came for my, the funeral of the wife of my brother in Tema, and so stayed over for Christmas, and so told Bishop Kofi, what is it? You need any help? I want some villages around. And so he says, Sakumono. I wonder whether Sakumono is a village. <laughs> and then he added Christ the King. I said, who can replace Campbell in Christ the King? And then he went on and on, and until I, I insisted that I wanted the village, then he said, you can go to, uh, okay, Shaki, Sakina or Sakina or whatever. Eh? Yeah, some place, some Sakina thing here. You know, you know the place? Mm-hmm. So that's where we were last night. Okay, we were last night in Sakina for Mass in a well-ventilated church because the windows were not still in place. So it was well-ventilated and we had a good mass there. <laughs> and so this morning I thought I was coming to another village and I find myself here. I don't want to re-describe Sakubono as a village, but apparently the bishop wanted to give me a change. I haven't made a journey to Sakina. Those who know that journey know that the name of the place has to be Domiabra. Okay, you, you go there because you really want to go there. So that was yesterday. But my dear friends, on this Christmas day, gathered for this worship of the Eucharist, you know that certain things will be the same. The conduct of the celebration of the Mass is always the same. We gather. We ask for forgiveness of our sins. We 
trusting that God has forgiven us. We thank God with a hymn of glory. We say a prayer. We listen to a readings. We bring our gifts. We bless them on the altar. And it's time for communion. So you can almost predict every phase of the celebration of the Eucharist. In that sense, somebody can say the Mass stands to be boring because it's the repetition of the same gestures. Except for one thing. That thing which takes place from here. That always changes and is never the same at any Mass. The Word of God that is proclaimed always changes and with the change of with the changing of the word of god we always given a new reason for what happens on the altar so the gestures will be the same but the meaning always changes from here last night the readings you listen to are not what you listen to this morning which just means that this time let us come to celebrate jesus on the altar with a new understanding of who Jesus is for us. And so, the readings of this morning, from the prophet Isaiah chapter 52, how beautiful on the mountains is the one who bears glad tidings, saying, to, saying that Zion, your Redeemer, lives and reigns. And so, wants us to recognize that the coming of Jesus is to be seen like a prophet who brings glad tidings. And the glad tidings of good news that your, your Redeemer reigns is Jesus presenting himself as the Savior of humanity and causing us therefore to rejoice in the presence and the coming of a Savior. That's good. Then we listen to the second reading from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 1. And the letter to the Hebrews does an overview of almost all of the scriptures and says that God, who in the past, in so very many different ways, spoke to our ancestors, in these last days, is spoken to us through his son. So the letter to the Hebrews is thinking about Abraham. He's thinking about Moses. He's thinking about uh, David, Solomon, the prophets, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, all of these prophets who brought the word of God, Elijah included. All of these prophets came at very many different times and in different ways to proclaim the message of God. And in the last days, God decided to speak to us through his son, Jesus Christ. And so, what is it? Last night, the readings drew our attention essentially to Jesus as a savior. This morning, the readings draw attention to Jesus as a savior plus something else. Plus somebody who reveals God to us. And the revelation becomes clear in the gospel. God nobody has ever seen. It is the only son who lies in the bosom of the father who has come to make him known. So Jesus is a savior that is true. But not just a savior. He also has come to reveal God for who he truly is. And so it goes. Sunday coming up, the readings would add another dimension to Jesus born for us. So the birth of Jesus we celebrate at Christmas is a celebration of the birth of a savior. But it's not just a savior. It's also a celebration of a revealer. Somebody who has come to reveal God to us. God nobody has ever seen. It is the beloved son in his bosom who has come to make him known to us. And so we we'll go on to say that beside Christ there is no revelation. Nobody knows the father. And on Sunday we shall listen to something more added to this. So last night you reflected on Jesus as savior. I'll briefly touch on that and then go on with the testimony that John the Baptist renders to Jesus, enabling us to understand who Jesus is as a savior. And then briefly look at Jesus as a revealer who has come to make the Father known to us.
How long do you want me to talk? Father, a mass should be for how long? Minutes. One hour. Thirty minutes. And one hour. So I should watch, especially since this is Christmas. Probably before coming, you put something in the oven, and we don't want it to burn. You want to go back and see whatever you put in the oven and be able to serve her Christmas. So I'll try to be very brief. But for me, it's also very important that you understand the feast you celebrate. There is no Christian church that celebrates as many feasts as the Catholic church. It is feast of this, it is feast of that, it is feast of this and feast of that. And the multiplicity of feasts it's not simply because we want to take holy days. But their purpose is to always give us an occasion to teach and to understand something which is not always clear about the God we worship. And so one is Christmas. And since you live in Ghana and other places in Africa, you meet those who say Christmas is a pagan feast. Now you meet those who say that we should not celebrate Christmas because it is the work of idols. And so on and on and on. But I think that we, you and I, we should know and understand what we celebrate. And you, we began that last night. And so Christmas you know, we Christians have a faith which is based on a two-chapter book, okay? A book with two chapters, with a very long introduction and a very long epilogue. The introduction is all of the Old Testament, and the epilogue is from the Acts of the Apostles till the book of Revelations. And the two chapters are in the Gospels, and the one first chapter is Christmas, and the second chapter is Easter. These are the two chapters of the Christian faith or the Christian belief. One, the first chapter, tells us not so much about a birthday of Jesus, because that is not why we celebrate Christmas. Christmas is not the birthday celebration of Jesus. Christmas is rather what you just listened to in the gospel. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. That is Christmas. Jesus becoming flesh is the reason for Christmas. It is not the birthday. Of course, having assumed flesh in the womb of Mary, Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea. And he was born during the time when Caesar Augustus was the emperor. So the period we know, by the exact date, Joseph didn't record it and Mary did not take note of it. So broadly we know the period, but the day is still not anything that anybody notified and put down. So it is not the day that we remember. What we remember at Christmas is that God's son, God who so loved the world that he set his son as a savior, the son came and took flesh, our flesh, in the womb of Mary. And it is so that when the time comes at Easter for Jesus to take a flesh to the cross and be nailed and to have a blood to shed to redeem us, Jesus would have the instruments for salvation. That's why it's a two-chapter book. So Christmas is Jesus coming to take the instrument of his salvation and Easter is Jesus working our salvation with the instrument that he came to take. And the instrument that he came to take is the flesh, our flesh from the womb of Mary. And therefore a Christian who celebrates only Easter and does not celebrate the birth of Jesus celebrates a feast without a beginning or a feast which limps. For Christmas leads to Easter, 
and Easter requires Christmas. And so that's why we talk about the two chapter book. Christmas, Jesus becoming flesh, and Easter, Jesus working our salvation with the flesh. And why flesh? Why was it necessary that Jesus took flesh? That's why you call him a savior. Because in the book of Genesis, in chapter 2, and goes on to chapter 3, when God told Adam not to eat of the tree in the middle of the garden, and he did, when God came and cursed first the serpent, the woman, and then Adam, what God then said, by way of concluding his visit was, dust you are, and unto dust you shall return. And God left. So the human person created in the image and likeness of God, which says splendor and glory, is just meant to return to dust. And so that sin does not have the final word, God activated his plan B. And the plan B was for Jesus to come to take this dust, which on account of sin is going to end up in dust, make it his own, and pass it through death and raise it up. So transforming the destiny of every human person. So that when we speak as Christians, we say that dust we are, but in the resurrection of Christ, we shall all be raised to glory. This is the work of our salvation. And this is how Jesus has come to save us. He's come to remove this destiny that was prescribed for us by sin and transform that into a destiny of his own glory. So when he came to take our flesh, which in Adam sinned and was destined to return to dust, Jesus passed it through death and raised it up. And when he raised it up, he took it then into the glory of his heavenly father. So imagine, the flesh that Jesus took from the womb of Mary, Jesus did not abandon it in the grave. Because when he rose and he saw Thomas, he said, put your hands here, put your finger here, and see that it's the same body which was crucified, which has been raised. So our salvation is like that. Our body, despite its sin in Christ Jesus, will be transformed and raised to glory. And it is Jesus who comes to do this, who becomes our savior. So we call Jesus a savior because he's the one who's come to transform our destiny from returning to dust to now returning to the glory of his heavenly father. And precisely because of this, you get the proof of this from John the Baptist. When John the Baptist was asked whether he was a prophet or the one coming, John says, I am not the one. I am only the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Then he goes on to add a small detail which is very significant for us to understand who Jesus is. John then goes on to say, the one coming after me is greater than I. And his sandals are not even fit to loosen. That's a proverb. That is a proverb. It's a proverb that every Jew understands. And it's a proverb that all of us gathered here, if we read the Old Testament, should also understand. If you do have Bibles here, or you do have them at home, when you go take the book of Deuteronomy chapter 25, and begin to look at a passage about leverage marriage. Leverage marriage is a system in ancient Israel. Sometimes it exists in other parts of Africa. When brothers live together, and they, one of them marries and dies before he is able to bring forth, have children with a wife, then his surviving brother sometimes is allowed to take the wife of his dead brother and make children. And whatever children are made, they bear the name of the dead brother, and in the case of ancient Israel, so that the name of the dead brother does not disappear from Israel. But every now and then, when you read Deuteronomy, you will find this out. Every now and then, there comes a brother who is reluctant to take 
a dead man's, a dead brother's wife. But the wife married is worried, married into the family. And so the woman denied sexual rights, gets an appeal, a way of getting her freedom back to give her love to anybody he, she wants. So first, she goes to the elders and complains to them. The elders speak to the man. If the man listens and the thing is settled, so might the better. But when the man refuses to listen, then the elders will gather at the city gate and invite the man to come. The wife goes to him and appeals to him the last time. And when the man insists that he doesn't want to take her and perform for her the rights of a husband, then the woman is allowed to go and loosen the sandals of the feet of the man, spit in his face, slap his face with the sandals, and with doing those gestures, the woman acquires her freedom to go and give her love to any person she wants. So this right generated a proverb in Israel that if anybody says that your sandals have been removed, then it means somebody has taken over what? Your job, okay? When your sandals are removed, it means somebody has taken over the work and the job that you should be performing. So when the John the Baptist says, I am not fit to loosen his sandals, it is not simply humility. It is not John who has been humble. But John is echoing a proverb which means that he is not fit to do what the Savior is coming to do. He is not fit to be the Savior. The Savior is only Jesus. John the Baptist, he is not the Savior. And he doesn't want to be the Savior. So he says, I am not fit to loosen the sandals of his feet. So John was using a proverb, meaning that the Savior is only one. It's only Jesus. And that's why in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, when Peter and John, after Jesus had been crucified, were arrested and brought before the Sanhedrin, Peter stands up and says, Listen, men of Israel, there's no name given in heaven and on earth by which we are to be saved by the name of Jesus. There is only one Savior and there's only one name given for salvation in the heavens and on earth. Therefore, we know about Buddha. He came to give teachings about meditation. We know about Krishna. We even know about Muhammad, the great prophet, who came also to give to God's teaching. But there's none. There's none who died and rose and so became a source of salvation for all who follow him. So this is the uniqueness of Jesus as a savior. So unique that no big prophet in the Old Testament like John the Baptist. And about John the Baptist, Jesus himself says that of all women, of all men born of women, there's none greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John. Think about that. This morning, you would understand what Jesus was saying. You know what I mean? I'm not sure. This morning at communion, you will come and receive Jesus and introduce him into your life. John the Baptist never had that chance. John the Baptist, he wasn't a man who lived after the gospel. He died before Jesus did his work of salvation. We Christians, we are the beneficiaries of the salvation and the death of Jesus. And so when Jesus says, of all men born of women, John the Baptist is the greatest, yet the least in the kingdom okay, of God is greater than John the Baptist. That's what it means. We, living in the days after Jesus' death and resurrection, have a status and a privilege far greater than all the prophets of the Old Testament. So to think, for example, that you are greater than Abraham, you probably not believe it. Or to think that you're greater than Moses, you probably not believe it. Or Isaiah, or any of the prophets in the Old Testament. Because they all lived before the days of Jesus. 
In the beginning, you want to look at this? Take your Bible, look at 1 Peter chapter 1. And it says that these things prophets longed to see, but they didn't have the chance. It is you who have been given the chance to see, to hear, and to touch. So, Christmas celebrating Jesus born for us a savior enables us to think about all of this. And when that is the case, then we should not simply now rejoice in Jesus born to us as a savior. Then the other question is, what does it mean to have a savior in one's life? It means the type of thing that was done to make it necessary for Jesus to come, you should not do. And that is what? Sin. If Jesus came as a savior, he came to medicate sin. He came to provide us with wherewithal to be able to live in grace. And so, take yourself and look at Mary. She was said, full of grace, meaning no sin ever touched her. And with the coming of Jesus, that's what he bestows on us. You listen to the gospel, we receive his uh, grace, uh, grace upon grace in Christ Jesus, so that we do not always fall into the trap of sin. So my dear friend, Christmas is about this. It's about salvation. It is the first act leading to the event of Easter when Jesus would go to the cross to set us free from sin and then enable us to live free from sin. I use the word again, enable us, make it possible for us. This means that we need to recognize that Christian life is not an ordinary way of life. Do not deceive yourself ever into thinking that Christian life is an ordinary way of life. Nobody lives Christian life with his own personal energies. Christian life is not meant for ordinary energies of life. Christian life is a life of grace. It's something you pray for, it's something you ask for, and it's something that enables you to live, pleasing to God. You do it, and I do it. So for me, I know that priesthood is not with my energy. If any priest will leave his priesthood from his own energies, he will flounder, will get nowhere. Just as when you celebrate marriage and bring it here and it is blessed, you also submit it to the grace of God. And the idea is then that with the grace of God, you suppose you will be able to live together. So what you create with prayer, you should not try to live without prayer. It doesn't work. I was ordained a priest with prayer. Somebody laid his hands on me and said a prayer and that turned me into a priest. The first time I go to see my father, and my father calls me father. And the worst case was still when he decided to come to me for confession. So for the old man, he knew something had changed. Whether I myself also perceived that change in me was my challenge. But that's what it is. With their position and prayer, they made me into something. And so in baptism, the same happens. In confirmation, the same happens. In all the celebration of the sacrament, prayer transforms you into something else. And all we need to recognize is that if we create something with prayer, then we should sustain it and maintain it with prayer. When we create something with prayer and then forget about prayer, we go down here, we go under. It is like Peter walking on water, right? Lord, if it is you, ask me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. And as long as Peter kept his gaze on Peter, Jesus, he could walk on the water. But as soon as instead of looking at Jesus, he looked at the storm and the wind, he began to go down. It is not with our energies that we walk on water or live the life of grace or anything of a Christian. So Christmas means all of this for us. It is Jesus born for us as a savior, but Jesus who invites us also to live a life of grace which he has come to bestow on us. This is salvation for us. We are okay with that? So, when that is the case, 
when the discussion is about Christmas being idolatry or whatever, you know what to say. And if it's a question of the date, 24th and 25th, you also know what to say, right? Because that wasn't a bad day. It's a date of convenience. It's a date that enables Christians not to be engaging in idolatry, that's worship of the sun. And instead of worshiping the sun, the Christians said we worship rather the birth of our Savior instead of the birth of a new sun. Event of history. It's like initially when the missionaries got to Elmina and they learned that the fishermen do not go to sea on Tuesday, the Christians had come with Sunday as the day of rest and worship. And they tried to change the Tuesday of not going fishing to the Sunday, whatever. But if it were not been for the resurrection of Jesus on the first day of the week, the early Christian, early missionary would simply have taken Tuesday, which was the day of rest anyway for the people, and have made that the day of worship. Things like that do happen in several places where people go preaching the gospel. They look at a local custom and celebration, and they put a Christian event on there. And while the pagans do the atom, Christians can do the atom. So, Merry Christmas. I think I should finish. I should finish, no? As for Jesus, a revealer, just read the Gospels. God nobody has ever seen. It is only begotten Son who has come to make him known to us. And so Jesus reveals not only himself, but he reveals the Father to us. And he reveals the Holy Spirit to us. So, our belief in God as a Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is all made through Jesus. And everything we know about God is everything that Jesus has made known to us through the Gospels. So, celebrating this feast, we're starting today. You continue for the week coming up. And then you prepare yourself for the second chapter, which will be Easter. So when at Easter you gather again to celebrate, try to fashion the link between the two. Jesus born for us, and Jesus crucified for us. Jesus take flesh, and Jesus taking the flesh to the cross. Jesus taking flesh out of sin, and Jesus glorifying the flesh from the tomb. This is what Jesus has done for us at Christmas. So... I'll end here and wish all of you the blessings of Christmas again. We recite the food. Let us now stand. And to God who has spoken to us through the word of Scripture, let us now turn to Him and profess our faith in God and His Son, Jesus Christ. 48, hymn number 48.
Oh yes, Lord, we believe that Jesus is our Savior. Shall we come before him with our petitions, with our intentions and supplications? That of the Universal Church, our church community, the, our nation, Ghana, and all those who have asked us to pray for them and let our response be at each intention. help Christians to walk in the light of hope and love. We pray in hope. Let us pray that the birth of the Prince of Peace may spread understanding and unity among all people throughout the world. We pray in hope. We pray in hope. That Christ, who took on himself our human weakness, may be the, the eyes of the blind, the strength of the weak, and the friend of the lonely. We pray in hope. That the coming of Christ may fill our hearts with joy and make, our, make, and make us herald of his gospel as it did the shepherds. We pray in hope. Let us pray that our own needs on this special day may be blessed before God. We pray in hope. Brothers and sisters, in the silence of our hearts, shall we present to the Lord, who is not only the revealer but the redeemer, who is also our savior, that his redemption may be upon our lives, our families. Speak to your God. That you too may receive grace in place of grace.
Shall we fly to the patronage of our mother who gave flesh to the Savior, the mother of the Redeemer, the mother of the Re Revealer, Mary, as we say, Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, Hail our lives, our sweetness. To you do we cry, for banished children of Eve, to you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping this veil of tears, tender, most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of your womb, Jesus, O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. All this we ask through Christ our Lord. Jesus gave to me no one can destroy him. I have joy in my heart, deep, deep down in my heart. Jesus gave to me, and no one can destroy him. I have joy in my heart, deep, deep down. I have joy, I have joy in my heart, deep, deep down in my heart. I have joy, I have joy in my heart. Jesus gave to me, Jesus gave to me. Ah, and no one can destroy it. I have joy in my heart. Jesus gave to me, Jesus gave to me. Ah, I have joy in my heart. Jesus gave to me, Jesus gave to me. Ah, oh, sing God to the Lord, and you song. Sing God to the Lord of the earth. Sing a holy song from the heart. Oh, hallelujah. Sing on to the Lord. Sing on to the Lord of the earth. Lord, the high. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Wonderful. Wonderful is the Lord. Hallelujah, the Lord. Hallelujah. Almighty King. Oh, hallelujah. The Prince of Peace. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful is the Lord. Sing unto the Lord. And you song. Sing unto the Lord. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, the Prince of the Wonderful, Wonderful, Wonderful is the Lord. Hallelujah, Almighty King. Oh, Hallelujah, Ah, Wonderful, Wonderful. Christo, 
is it on a backseat so Oh, my friend, oh, say, oh, my, my Oh, that's oh, a photo for So, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah Now, he's all Oh, my friend, oh, say, oh, my, my That's a photo for So, yeah, yeah Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah Oh, God, you are so good. God, you are kind. Ah, God, you are my Lord. God, you are so good. You are so kind. Ah, God, you are wonderful. Excellent is your name. Excellent. Hey, excellent. You are wonderful. Wonderful. Excellent is your name. You are wonderful. Excellent is your name. Excellent is your name. Oh, excellent is thy mind. God, you are so wonderful. My God, you are.
us now pray together, my brothers and sisters, that my and your offering may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Make acceptable, O Lord, our oblation on this solemn day when you manifested the reconciliation that makes us wholly pleasing in your sight and inaugurated for us the fullness of divine worship. We ask you this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit and our one God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Lift your heart to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord Holy Father Almighty and eternal God for in the mystery of the word made flesh a new light of your glory has shone upon the minds of all our minds so that we recognize in him God made visible we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominations, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory. And so without end we acclaim, with unceasing heart the hymn of your glory.
praise Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all that, all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed the human person in your image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he may have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to his aid, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered your covenant to men, and through the prophets you've taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners he gave freedom. And to the sorrowful of heart he brought joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, but rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for you, for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruit of those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit sanctify these uh, gifts, these offerings, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For it was he who great granted us this great mystery, which himself bestowed on us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved those who were his own in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread. He blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with wine, the fruit of wine, Jesus gave thanks, then gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink of it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And now we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember the death of Christ and his descent to the realm of dead, and we proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood 
the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O oh Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your love and kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered together into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become one living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially for your servant, Francis, our Pope, John Bonaventure, our Bishop, and our Cardinal, Texan, and the whole order of bishops and all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the presence of your Christ and all the dead, whose fate you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the blessed Mary, Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and with all your apostles and the saints in your kingdom. There with the whole of creation, free from the corruption of sin and death, we may glorify you through Christ our Lord. Through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. For it is through him, with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that we give you glory and honor, Almighty Father, forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil and grant us peace in our days. Grant that by your help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord Jesus born to us as a Savior be always with you. Let us offer to it a sign of Christ's peace.
And so this, my brothers and sisters, is Jesus, Lamb of God, born for us a Savior and a Redeemer, and happy are all who are invited to his saving meal. Lord, I'm not ready to receive you. And may the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. First communion hymn. Sing hymn number one four three. One four three.
Let us kneel and pray the Anima Christi. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, Christ save me. me. Blood, Blood of Christ, Christ liberate me. me. Water, Water flowing from, from the side, side of Christ, Christ wash me. me. Passion, Passion of Christ, Christ strengthen, strengthen me. me. O oh, good, good Jesus, Jesus, hear me. Within, within your wounds, hide me. Hide me. Suffer me, me not to be separated from you. From the malignant enemy, enemy defend me. me. At the At hour of my death, call me. And, and bid me come unto you. That with your sins, I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it, As it was, was in, the in the beginning, it is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it, As was, it was in the, in the beginning, beginning, it is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it, As was, it was in the, the beginning, beginning it is now, now and, and ever, ever shall be, world without, without end. end. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant, O oh merciful God, that just as the Savior of the world born this day is the author of a divine generation for all of us, so may he be the giver even of immortality to each one of us, especially as we commune with him in this Eucharist. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit and our one God forever and ever. Amen. Shall we please be seated? Shall we listen to a Christmas message? Shall we listen to a Christmas message? delivered by His Eminence, Peter Cardinal Kojoapia Texan. Your Eminence. Pardon me, we would have some presentations made to His Eminence. And after all those proceedings, we shall listen to the message. And so it is my singular honor now to invite our representatives, the parish pastoral council, I believe, to make a presentation to his eminence. Shall we give our chairperson, Mrs. Angate, a round of applause? Your Eminence, we are happy to have you here and privileged to have you celebrate Mass with us this Christmas Day. Let me say that we are happy to share the little we have as a parish with you on the day God shared his beloved son with mankind. So on behalf of all of us, Corpus Christi Catholic Church Sakumono would like to present a token to you as a remembrance of your celebration with us here today. So this is from all of us to you, your eminence.
because of lack of time and other activities for the day, we pleading with our cardinal to have a group picture quickly done with the parish pastoral council executives, or sorry, members if they are here. So quickly, you come forward. I think we will consider our mothers, Christian mothers, because of your special uh, outfit as well as St. Teresa of the Child Jesus. If there is time, we will consider. Thank you very much. So, parish pastoral council members, please come forward for a group photograph. Christian mothers, please. St. Teresa, please get ready. Catholic Women Association, please get ready. Catholic Women Association.
please, to give all of us an opportunity, we'll have day group photographs. So may I kindly ask that we start congregating for photographs, starting with Monday through to Sunday. So Monday group, please get ready. Uh -huh. So Monday group, can we be a bit snappy? Tuesday, get ready. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, in that fashion. And then we'll end with the choir. The choir will be the last group. So Monday, Tuesday, get ready, please. Tuesday group, please. Thank you, Wednesday group. Thursday group, let's get ready. Thank you, Wednesday group. Thursday group, holy, holy, full of grace. Thank you very much. Friday group.
Thank you. Saturday group and Sunday group, please get ready. And Sunday group, main choir and the sanctified voices, please get ready. Auntie Sharon, can you also get all the children ready? All children. Parents, please assist us. Get all the children ready. singing ministry please come Thank you very much. Children.
And finally, we have the knights and ladies of the altar. Corpus Christi, Corpus Christi, how good and pleasant it is when, when God's, God's people live together, together in unity. unity. Tomorrow, the 26th of December, 2020, Mass will be celebrated here for the sick and the aged. The time is 7.30. Parishioners should kindly take note of the time. Counselors will accompany Eucharistic ministers after Mass to, give, to take gifts to the homes of the sick and the aged. 27th December 2020 is the feast of the Holy Family and is also our cultural Sunday. The Archbishop and the Apostolic Nuncio will be in our midst. Parishioners are therefore encouraged to be in their colorful traditional clothes and dresses. We will have only one mass at exactly 9 a.m. Monday 28th of December 2020 is the feast of the Holy Innocent. Mass will be celebrated here. The time is exactly 8 a.m. The mass is specially celebrated for children so parents are encouraged to bring their children for mass on that particular day. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, madam. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we have had a beautiful celebration this morning. You would appreciate that we are of different shades, of different colors, of different opinions and backgrounds, but together we make the body of Christ. We may not have been able to capture everybody on the photograph, but indeed we have got a cross section of the parish and we have to work in the interest of time and in the interest of the schedule of our dear Peter Cardinal Kojo Apia Texan. It is now my singular honor to say thank you, your eminence, for celebrating the Holy Eucharist with us, for being our shepherd and spending time with us today. We would give you the last word 
as you say a few parting words to us in your message and then we can recess No, I suppose, I suppose I have talked enough. Uh, do not want to add to it. Uh, and the only pattern, message or words anybody can share during Christmas is a prayerful wishes for the blessings of the season and to commend everybody into the new year as a year of joy, prosperity, year of achievement and realization of visions and wishes and desires, God's abundant inspiration, guidance and protection in everything that we set ourselves to do. It has always also been intriguing that Ghana celebrates its uh, election in a way that it leads to Christmas. And so years ago, about 10 or 11 or 12. When I was in Cape Coast and I used to be chairman of the National Peace Council, we found ourselves always having to deal with, uh, you know, uh, election related conflicts and issues and all of that. And all of those always led into Christmas. And as you know, the traditional call on Christians during the election is to pray for peace. And praying for peace and leading to Christmas where we celebrate peace or the birth of the Prince of Peace just makes it incumbent and necessary upon all of us to do one thing. And this we always spoke about and shared in the past. Let us never pray for something we don't want humanity or any human person may never pray for something he or she does not want. What does that mean? It means that do not pray for something when you act and behave in a way that does not lead to the realization of what you pray for. That's when you pray for something you don't want. If you pray for something, then it will just, it's just proper for the prayer intention that you also collaborate as it were, cooperate with God, that you behave and act in a way that is conducive to the attainment of the, of the wishes that one prays for. This has always been our intention and prayer. When you were going into elections, all the phone calls came to our office in the Vatican. It's an office that takes care of so very many issues. The name of the office is uh, the Castle for Promoting Integral Human Development. In that, we look at human dignity, we look at human rights, we look at uh, personal freedoms, we look at prison, we look at uh, justice uh, issues, we look at healthcare issues, we look at trade issues, economic issues, financial issues. We look, all kinds of issues come under that domain. And so, Ghana, as in the United States, became a big concern of our office as both countries went for elections. And in both cases, the thing was to ask the Holy Father and our office to work and to pray for peace. And when it comes, we always do. But having the opportunity now to stand here, I just like to repeat what I used to say years ago when I was here with the National Peace Council. When we pray for peace, then let us live, behave, and conduct our lives in a way that is conducive to peace. When we pray for peace and do things which do not you know, lead to peace, then the way we insult God, we ask God for something that deep down we're not committed to. So we continue. Uh, there, there, there's no joy. Uh, I'm getting a little bit selfish now. There's no joy for me on account of the, of the big area that our, our office takes care of, and all of which comes under uh, my uh, leadership. When there is any celebration of peace in Ghana, or any, any, anything that appears in the paper, Ghana prays for this, Ghana prays for that, 
It's always an occasion for me to raise my shoulders small. And so I would wish that there would not be that thing which would make it difficult for me to raise my shoulders. And therefore, at Christmas, I do not only wish you peace of Jesus born to us as a savior, but I wish the whole country peace in its own celebration of election this democratic process. And I want to commend the subsequent processes that will lead to a new government or whatever continued form of government we have, the peace of Christ, the peace of everyone, and the peace of all that we seek to do, and a peaceful environment for our own development and for our own growth. This will be my prayer for you in the new year, and this is a prayer that I commend to all of us gathered here. Let us pray for peace, but there's, because there is no situation that beats it. And I know what I'm talking about. I've been to South Sudan four times working for peace. I've been to the DRC Congo three times talking about peace. I've been to our neighboring country, Ivory Coast, three times about the same issue. And all of them are related with elections and politics. And when that is the case, as the proverb goes, when two elephants fight, which, who suffers? And that's always the case. That's always the case. Look at the present day Ethiopia. Who are the ones crossing the border into Sudan and to the desert? The ordinary people. So it is so important that we learn to preserve peace so that living with peace, everything that we do can also prosper. We are supposed to work for development, but the biggest enemy of development is conflict. Where there is conflict, there can be no development. And if we want to promote development, then we need to create an fashion and atmosphere of peace. So that goes again to repeat my wish and my prayerful wish for all of you at Christmas in the new year. May Jesus, born for us as Prince of Peace, fill the hearts of all of you, continue to guide you and inspire your lives and lead you in everything that you do. May God bless you. And now let's, uh, if there's nothing else, let us pray for God's blessing. The Lord be with you. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world and by that glorious birth has illumined this holy day, drive far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. Amen. May God who will that the great joy of his son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and the heavenly realms, fill you with the gifts of his peace and favor and make you share us with the, with the church in heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of Christmas descend upon all relatives and all friends of yours who could not worship with you, but who wish that you pray for them. May they enjoy the consolation of the Holy Spirit, the peace of heart, and the contentment of spirit. And may Jesus, born for us a Savior, be the guidance of their own lives. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Let us now go in the peace of the Lord. Our Mass is over. Thanks be to God. And Merry Christmas. Many happy days. For our reception, we sing him number 142. One, four, two.
He fly to your patronage. O oh, Holy Mother of God, despise me not our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O oh, glorious and ever blessed Virgin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.